Kaina, and welcome to Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, brought to you by the Kauai Foundation. I'm Ahuke Kahu Cardwell, and here we are today in Ho'omaluhia Park, on the windward side of Oahu. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii Ne, and I'll tell you this right now, we got an awesome guest on the show, so let's go on over here and meet him. Kamaka. Aloha. Aloha. Mahalo for having me on the show. Oh, wonderful. Thanks Appreciate for being it. on Voice of Truth. Great oh, to have you, you here. Thank you very much. Kamaka Pili. Yes. Did I say your name right? Correct. Wonderful. And Kamaka, we wanted to have you on the show today because you do something very, very interesting. And that is you design, well, yes. instead of saying it, let's take a look at it. You're wearing it right now. So this is one of them. Yes, correct. Wow. You design clothing. Clothing. As well as jewelry. Jewelry too, yes. But it isn't just any clothing or jewelry. No. It's Hawaiian style. Yes. Jewelry and clothing. Yeah. yeah. It's I whatever I usually wear, or um, in a traditional sense like a malo or a poreo, I try to use that as a platform or a canvas for me to put messages on top. Wow. In, in the terms of designs. So it isn't just clothing. It's art. On yes. Clothing. Yes. It's art. clothing that is art. Yep. But it also conveys a message. Yes. Yes. All the designs for me it. When I put it out and when I made this company, it kind of was an avenue for me to share the messages that kind of speak to me. Kamaka, what are those messages? Um, let's just take this one, for example, this shirt. I drew this when I visited Kalau Papa with my Papa Lomi class wow. when I was doing Lomi Lomi. And we went down there to go and massage whatever patients were willing to be touched down there. And um, tell us, tell our listeners, because we have viewers all over the world, what Kalau Papa Kalau is. Kalau Papa is the peninsula down on Molokai where they... Um, gathered all the patients with leprosy. It was a leper colony. Yeah, it was a leper colony. Yeah. Um, right now, there's only a few, I'm not too sure the exact number, a few patients left that are still surviving. So we wanted to go down and kind of give back to them and you know, kind of make them feel good. And, um, but they're very protective, so not all of them are very open. So we went down there to go and um, kind of give back to them. And the day we flew in was a really big swell coming through the state. and. Uh, that bay right in the front was there was big waves and and um, the kind of waves are crashing onto the reef the rocks and then the, all the water sprayed up in the air all the salt was in the air so it was kind of hazy and everything so if you look at the design it's kind of what I seen the ocean speaking to me and it kind of goes this way because that's the way the water the waves are going like in this direction this yeah. direction yeah wow. so the first one represents the the swelling of the wave, how big the waves actually got. And then the middle design, all the triangles represent the reef that was in the middle of the water because the waves are so big, it started to expose the rocks. And all the um, arrows in the middle of the triangles represent when the, the wave hit the rock, all the, the salt and all the water got sprayed up in the air. To me, it was more the, the energy of the ocean that we never really get to see in the, unless it's in times of big swells and you know something that could be negative, like a very dangerous situation in the water. Gotcha. Um, and then the last one represents all the sheets of salt that kind of just lying down the coastline where you could even see the, the cliffs and the coast kind of faded away. So to me, it was really giving me the opportunity to finally connect because living on Oahu and kind of the rat race of every day, it's kind of hard to really stop yourself and connect in a situation like today where we stand, you know, listening to the birds and watching the leaves sway in the wind. That's what it was speaking to me was that it's important for me to connect every single day, at least five minutes or so, something small. But if we never give ourselves the time to connect and ground ourselves before we step into our daily lives, we can get lost within ourselves, and our thoughts can you know, consume us and everything. So to me, that's what my message was, but I know everybody deals with that rat race. So it was a message that I was hoping that other people can connect to as well. The one thing I always tell people is like, you know, the messages that I share, don't think that I'm an expert at it <laughs> because it's, it's directed towards me. So I have designs about humility, designs about patience. And, <laughs> and I was just like, you know, I, I share this message, but know that I'm not the most patient one. You know, I'm not the most humblest one, but I work at it. And these messages are kind of like, when I put my shirt on, it's a, it's a character that I'm supposed to be putting on myself too. Ah. So when I put this shirt on, I, I remind myself that every step I take should be a step of connection. And if I don't wear the shirt, you know, it's kind of, it's a constant reminder for me is what it really is. So you make these for you, for yourself. Yes. And, but what happens then is people see them and they go, well, I want one of those too. That's in the making, <laughs> Well, in making them for you, obviously, I mean, a lot of people have done that. Yes. yes yeah. Wow. What are some of the other messages, Kamaka, that you've made? Um, design. There was my first, actually, when my, my company, Na'avala Design, started, it was 
from um, Ohe Kapala stamps, which is bamboo. Ohe bamboo, Kapala meaning to stamp. And as a traditional practice that um, kind of really goes side, um, hand in hand with kapa making. Um, Hawaiians would decorate their kapa with different designs that held stories in mo'olelo and kauna or, or the hidden meaning of, of something. So one day I drew this design um, and it was just like a bamboo looking design. And what I got from it was that I was talking too much and that I had to finally follow my, um, my words with action. So I had to go into the forest and harvest. So after I drew this design and I got that message, I actually went and I harvested my first bamboo. I carved the design and I made these shirts and I made the Christmas presents. And the design, what it really talks about is that your actions speak louder than your words. And I wanted to, with every design too, I kind of partner up with an organization that I can kind of give back because I always want to give back. And now that I have another opportunity or an avenue to do so, find ways to do it. So I partnered this specific design with um, Waikiki Surf Club because I coach the boys down there, the paddling. Because if it's perfect that you know, you're in the boat, in the canoe, and you can talk all you want, but it ain't gonna do anything unless you finally put your actions and you paddle as hard as you can, as hard as you speak. So it's messages like that that really relate to me, but I can find people who can relate to it as well. Wow, so it's like walk your talk. Yeah. Amazing. Exactly. Amazing. I notice your necklace, which is beautiful. Tell yep. us about that. So this was my latest project, and I've collaborated with um, Hawaii Culture and Retail Association. Mm -hmm. um, and we were able to, these were actually some designs I drew. There are five total, and they're one design for each acronym of Aloha, A-L-O-H-A. Um, this design is the last A in Aloha, and it represents Ahonui. And the whole message of this five acronyms goes back to this late, um, Anti Pilahi Paki, and she was one who created these acronyms to kind of give a better understanding of what Aloha really means. So when I was listening to this story for the first time, the way I heard it, at least for this this design, Ahonui, which means to be patient, um, the way she explained it, or the way I heard it, was that you gotta be patient. Like you know something is gonna happen, and the moment that you're waiting for it will come. You just don't know when. You cannot just act like I don't know if it's gonna happen. I'm not gonna. I'm not too sure. You know. Debate, you know, you're contemplating yourself. You have to be firm in that you know it's going to happen, but you just don't know when, so that's when your faith comes in and, and keeps you grounded. Um, the design came from a personal experience of mine that challenged my patience, <laughs> <laughs> and this design kind of stepped out. Um, and that, that um, experience was me and a friend we went to a restaurant, and the restaurant was completely empty, for the most part. And the table that we stood at, or we sat at, there was all empty tables around like three or four rows, outside of us was completely empty and this couple came in and they chose to um, sit down in the table directly behind me and the lady who sat in the chair directly behind me so when she sat down and then she got up and she grabbed my table and she said I'm gonna move your table because um, I cannot sit in my seat and I looked at her I was, and I looked around and I was like you know what no because you have so much other seats to sit in and then I, I thought to myself and I gathered my thoughts and I was like okay hey, this is just another challenge for me to prove my patience. Here comes another shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so, there you go. so the design kind of represents that, you know, all the, the X's on the side represents all the empty chairs and tables around me. <laughs> and then the, the squares in the middle represents the seats that we were sitting in. And then the, each one has a piece of core inlay. And that represents the seat that they chose to set, <laughs> sit at, which is directly behind me. <laughs> so something negative like that, that, that time of frustration and stuff, I always just, push myself to find what positive I can grab out of it. And it might not be clear to me then, but when I spend some time, sit down and really collect my thoughts, I can try to find something. And this is what came out of that experience. So Kamaka, it sounds to me like you're using just what happens in everyday life, especially the negative things that happen in life, to come up with your designs, to flip that around, that negative experience and design reminders for you and everybody else that go like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Be the other way. Yeah. Because for me, my, my role models in life are always the elderly. And as Michael Puna, I have my tutu, who is my father's mother's mother, so my third generation. She's um, 99 years old. Oh, wow. And I look at her and I listen to her experience. And she's still alive, so I try to talk to her as much as I can. And it's. I, I'm just floored at everything that she's have experienced in her life and to see how humble she is now, especially with all the change that she has gone through within the past 99 years. Um, there's really no reason why I should be complaining every single day. <laughs> and I, I fail at that, you know, and I, I'm, that's why I say I, 
I need these messages as much as I can because it's the way that I can finally connect to something greater. You know, everybody has their way of understanding something, and for me, it's, it's been always visual, and it's been always um, visual connected with history. You know, and I try to find a bridge between that, and with something like Island Connection, um, is our is a way that we can we can really hone in on something greater such as culture and business um, with different artists to create different um, products that are going to be able to share stories of our culture in a business context and try to move our people and our culture and, and our art into the forefront of Hawaii and the world's market to kind of really get our messages out there. It's very interesting what you said because most people I think and I, for a lot of time, most of the time, think that culture and business, mm -hmm. it's like oil and water. Mm -hmm. They don't mix. Yeah. But the truth is, they can mix very yes. well, can't they? Yeah, they can. And Be you've done that. Trying to. And it's a very, it, I've been working at it for about a year and a half. And I didn't really know what to expect. But taking these steps, I've really starting to realize how difficult it is um, for myself because I still have that restriction within my own gut sometimes um, and my thoughts kind of really play with me in, in a sense that it kind of pulls me in each direction that's why when my company name Na'al Vala'al Designs kind of takes me back to my gut and everybody has a connection and they can understand when they say you know I should listen to my gut feeling or my so, gut instinct yeah Na'al Vala'al means your gut talking to you right yeah so yeah. it's kind of my way of really getting my mind out of my mind myself out of my thoughts yeah. and really taking it down to my gut yeah. And that's a traditional, actual, a traditional practice in my eyes, because my kupuna, they've always done that. They always taught me, follow your gut, listen to your gut, put your thoughts aside sometimes because it could really distract you. That's it's fundamental to the Hawaiian culture going yes. back thousands of years, yes. isn't it? Yes. Wow. So the design, such as the Kalau Papa one, was a really good experience for me in that sense, because it really was something that my gut really connected to, you know, and I, and I got something tangible out of it for you know like a shirt or a designer and the opportunity to share that experience is really priceless to me. Kamaka what does it feel like for you when that happens? The feeling is going back to like paddling it's if you've ever been in a canoe the moment that your canoe is like hydroplaning on top of the water mm -hmm. that's the kind of feeling I get and even just chicken skin now thinking of it it's one of those experiences and the feelings that when you just know you know, it's, it's one of those most happiest moments. It's one of those things that, like a song that you can just listen to over and over and over and over and you never get old of it. You know, you never get over it. Mm -hmm. It's those kind of feelings that confirms, at least for my designs, that I've done something or I'm finished, you know, and it's, it's a success in my eyes. And just that you've also hit the bullseye. And yeah. I hit the bullseye. You've, got, you've captured the very essence of that message yeah. that came out of your now out. Yeah. Wow. And wow. when I don't get it, I know because I yeah. don't have that feeling. So it's either okay, I got to put this on the side. Let's just wait a little bit. And, you know, I cannot force it. I've drawn designs where I think about it and it doesn't come out the uh -huh. way I want it to. So I know it's not right. You know, it's not finished. It's not what it's supposed to be. History was always a big interest of me. I've always wanted to know where I came from. I always wanted to know what came before me. Um, the path that we walk on, like who paved it, you know, how did it get here, what work and struggles that they have to go through. Um, Pully Highway, for example, the first Pully Road took decades to get finished and the, the struggles and looking at pictures of them going on horseback and taking a couple days to get over the mountain. To me, that's just like, wow, that's my ancestors. You know, I want to know that to, it proves that we take it for granted and take advantage of the things we have today because we don't really give the respect that it had been given in the past. Mm. Um, I just don't want to be one of those who always look over something, you know. I, I want to get deep into it and really have that connection because it's by understanding you can connect. You don't want to miss it is what I you're saying. I don't want to miss it, yeah. Wow. Because there's a lot of things within a little bit. Like my designs are very simple and I tell everybody it might look redundant. You know, some of the designs kind of look the same after a while because I only use the basic shapes, lines, circles, triangles, whatever. But it's the story that I put into it that's always going to be different and it's kind of just allowing yourself to be open-minded in the steps that you take and what comes to you you know not to be so judgmental and I mean I can go on and on but the simplicity there's so much things in simplicity everything for me really comes from hula it all started from hula really? um, from hula I really got to 
ground myself and really understand where I came from, um, where I continue to come from. And Hula had guided me to take Lomi, Hawaiian massage. Um, and to me, it's like Hula is, is a, an essence of healing through art and through dance. And then Lomi is an essence of healing through touch. Um, but what I got from Lomi in specific was to really be able to follow your na'o. Um, follow your gut. Follow you your get. gut. Because a lot of people, I mean, you massage and you, re you cannot see what you're doing, you know, with the inside of your body. But if you follow your gut and just allow your hands to move where they're supposed to, um, they're really, I haven't got a negative complaint about that so far. It's always been, how do you do that? What do you know what you do? I don't know what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> it's just, I really just, it, doing a massage really gives me the opportunity to shut my thoughts and to challenge myself to see where my hands can guide me. And it's really taught me that. So I apply and I take that concept from that practice and I put that into designs. Um, then Lomi kind of guided me to La'ao, understanding the plants. La'ao Lapa'ao is Hawaiian healing through plants. Um, and it really gave me that a deeper connection to what's around me and the multi-purposes of what has been put here in nature by God, you know, and kind of really pull that out and share that story. So a lot of my designs kind of go back to that sense too of really giving yourself the patience to sit and understand one thing and to see how much layers can you take out from this one thing. It gives you an unlimited amount of art. Really, it does. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. So how many designs do you come up with at a time or how many designs do you come up with you um, know, within a week or a day? Sometimes it could be a lot. Sometimes I could be on a dry spell for a while because I don't think about it. And some people ask me, can I do designs for them? Can you make me a design or a logo or whatever? And I tell them I can, but I really don't like to um, because it kind of puts a, a deadline on me. And for me, if I'm following my na'ao, it's my connection to my akua, you know, to God. And he, he's the one who gives me, I say he gives me these designs because they're, again, they're messages for me. Mm -hmm. So sometimes designs can come real fast. And there's been like, I filled a book real fast. And then my second book has been empty for a while, you know, like halfway full. And it's okay, you know, because to me, I understand time comes in seasons. So I have these whole batch of designs that I've done. And right now I'm kind of in the season of really getting those messages out. And then I can feel I've done some designs recently, but I know it's not the season to really fill that book yet. I know that will be the following season to come. You and I and everybody else, we continue to look at petroglyphs in the rock yep. that were carved out probably thousands of years ago. Yep. And that's just like this. Inspiration right there. <laughs> right, there's the message. Yep. I have a petroglyph design too, and it came from a petroglyph, but I, I looked at it and it the story kind of put myself in what that petroglyph represents. And it's just talking about how sacred our land is. You know, this petroglyph was carved into our land. Mm -hmm. So to show the respect, it, it talks, my design talks about how sacred our lands are um, with the issue of Mauna Kea and the other issues of what lands are being overlooked in today's world. So I, th that's another story that I have to share too. Very, very, very simple. Yes. Lines and circles and designs can have this huge impact. Yes. Literally, globally, like Protect Mauna Kea is having right now. Yes. So what impact do you hope or want to have for, on a big scale, let's say, for the designs and symbols and work that you come up with? It's always been, I want my work to be worldwide. Wow. Worldwide, and it's a big goal, you know, and one thing that I've been taught through this process was that you have to dream big. If you dream small, Akua is only going to give you something small. But if you ask for something big, it might be a bigger challenge, but one day you'll get it. I want my messages um, or my designs, because it's so simple, and there's a lot of, like, everybody can kind of relate to it. And if you cannot really relate to my story, I draw it and I put it out and share it with the mind that I keep my design open-ended in hopes that you can replace my story with your own. You know, that you can relate an experience in your life with something that's similar to mine. You think of a triangle. The triangle, everybody, and the Hawaiians knew this too, that was the most strongest shape that there is, re representing what the mountain is in the shape of a triangle. But the deeper meaning is that that is the 
strongest or the deepest or the most manifold, most powerful, sacred land of all this land, Hawaii Ne. That's how the ancient and, houses and, were built. And that's how the ancient houses were built. And yeah. so when people do that, that's what it represents, not just representing this is Mauna Kea, but this is the mana that Mauna Kea holds. This shape that is the strongest of any shape, you know, just that context and that essence of it. Something so simple that we put onto something on a greater scale, it still means the same thing. So Kamaka, besides the tank top t-shirt you're wearing today and the necklace, what other things do you design? The latest project I've been working on, and I've been working on it for a while, it's taking a long time to do it though, um, is malos. And malo is a traditional loincloth that the men would wear. And it's just a, a cloth wrapped around and there's a flap in the front and the back. Um, I wanted to make models with different designs on them and the designs will be different, um, will, will represent different activities that our kupuna did or our, our, my grandfathers did in the past which they would wear a loincloth or a malo at. Um, so stuff like surfing or fishing or farming or um, canoe paddling or um, dancing, you know, something very simple that we don't really wear malos te technically kind of every day. Um, not anymore. Not anymore. My whole goal with it was to bring attention to what a malo represents. So I've worn malos in public and I've been getting kind of critiques here and there from people. For me, it was just making these malos will get my attention to this practice and it will have me have more respect for it in hopes that other people will follow too. You know, so I'm trying to follow more of a, a traditional practice or a traditional um, sense and I want to connect the traditions and contemporary, you know, yesterday and today, kind of the whole thing of culture and business. I want to find a bridge because some people, there's still pilikia or problems with it. You know, they still have their critiques and their judgments, which is fine. I understand. Um, I think my, my, my mission is just to find that bridge to make things okay for myself in hopes that people will see it and they will understand and it will be okay for them too. Malos for me is just, it's a, it's a really big project and it's something simple, it's just a piece of material, but the message behind it goes so far deep and, and it's, it's the kauna that really makes it worthwhile. I really want our messages to really reach across the world and clothes go all around the world, you know, and, I, and that's an avenue that I think it could be successful and I could achieve that. Um, but the messages of Hawaii needs in my eyes needs to be shared as much as possible because the way the world sees Hawaii today isn't the way that Hawaiians seen Hawaii yesterday and and the way that my 99 year old tutu have seen this place is not how everybody else sees it so if I can find an avenue or and a way to really share that where the understanding comes across successfully and that was the thing that the, the messages I intend for it, I have to find an avenue that that's the message that you're going to receive because sometimes it doesn't translate um, evenly, like social media. You can put something on social media and some, somebody else reads it, they might read it with a different intent than I, mean, I meant it to be. So I take that kind of a problem within my products too and try to find a successful avenue to do so. Okay, Kamaka, what is that message? What is that message that your 99-year-old tutu, how does she see Hawaii? What is that message that you want to get out there and have people realize and see and notice? I think the main message is that Hawaii and our culture is very special, not just because of the beauty that we all know it holds, but there's a lot more kauna, there's a lot more meaning, there's a lot more power that we don't see um, that I just want the world to be able to see. and. It, it's a, that's, it could be a hard question, you know, it, it's a hard answer to say because actually it's really big. There's so much things I want to say, but I really just want to show how sacred our culture is and how, why we take our culture so seriously because media can mistranslate our messages and that's the message everybody wants to see. So if I can find a way that the way we want thing, our stories to be told, I, I want to find an avenue to do so. Okay, so when people on the other side of the world actually get that message, what's the impact that can happen? That our kupuna will live. To me, our kupuna, even if they pass away, they're not dead because we remember them. Um, something as simple as a tea leaf. If I don't know what a tea leaf does, you know, I don't know that it can reduce fevers. I don't know that it's edible. If I don't know that all these multi-purposes and what it represents, 
then the kupuna that the tea leaf represents will die off if we forget. Um, but if we don't forget, they continue to live on. And to me, I have a lot of kupuna who I know did a lot for my family, did a lot for our Hawaiian people, and there should be no time that they are forgotten. You know? And if I can find a way to con continually keep their messages alive, then I think I fulfill my responsibility as a Hawaiian. Because I, kind of, I understand that every Hawaiian, we have a responsibility to our culture um, to perpetuate it in any way we can. So this is kind of more of a contemporary avenue to do so with a traditional mindset and traditional knowledge. I hope. <laughs> wow. Wow. Very, very powerful message. Thank you. And that's where we got to leave it. Kamaka Pili, mahalo for being Thank a voice of the very truth. much. And I keep doing it. what you're doing because your designs, your clothing are wonderful. Thank you very wonderful. much. Mahalo. And to our viewers, mahalo to you. Remember, you can watch Voices of Truth on the web 24-7 on VoicesOfTruthTV.com and you can like Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's Future on Facebook. I'm Ahuke Kahu Cardwell for the Kiwani Foundation and until next time, ahui ho! Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also, view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.